Okay, welcome back everyone. Today I have a bit of a different type of video. Today I'm going to narrate to you a dream that I had and a bit of the interpretation and a bit of a lesson that I gained from that. So, in this dream that I had, I was standing at the entrance to my room and I observed that on the floor there were clothes everywhere and these clothes were blocking my path to my bed. And I was standing there feeling as if there was no path for me to my bed. You know, just these things were on the floor and if I wanted to get to my bed, which is what I was trying to do in the dream, I would have to step on my clothes. And I particularly recall a specific uh, piece of clothing I have, a long sleeve white shirt on the floor. So that's the gist of the dream, very simple, very straightforward. Now, how does this relate to the topic? So, having studied Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud, who are two of the fathers of psychology, and with my Islamic and religious background, I have learned that dreams, that some dreams are truly significant with meaning and purpose. And they are an attempt from your subconscious or unconscious mind to tell you something of importance about your life. Now, not every dream is like that, but Every now and then we get an idea of a particular dream that we have and it leaves us with this feeling like, hmm, what was that about? It leaves you really questioning. So the two schools of thought vary on the dream and its function and the way it lays itself out. So Sigmund Freud, he believed that the psyche was trying to hide the message in the dream or speak subtly and therefore presented you with a dream for you to interpret. Carl Jung, on the other hand, he believed that the psyche was doing its best to communicate and therefore it is up to us to learn the importance of the structure of the dream. And what I mean by that is, and, and we'll break that down in, in the explanation, but you got to understand what is happening and what is the significance of that in our day-to-day -day life. So moving on and looking into that Jungian analysis of the dream is that for my life, clothes are just things to me. You know, more importantly though, these things have a place, and that place is the closet. So what this dream suggests to me is that the things in my life at that time that I had this dream were out of place, which led me to making some changes in what I do and what takes priority in my life. Some practical advice that can be gained from this dream and interpretation is that we all have things in our life that we do, some of this stuff that we do, we enjoy, and some of the stuff we do because we have to, right? And anyone who's worked a minimum wage job understands that, and particularly if you're in school and in a class that you don't enjoy, a subject you don't like or struggle with, you can even really wrap your mind around that. We have our favorite things, and we have the things that we must do. So firstly, it is incumbent on... It is incumbent on you to sort out the priorities in your own life. You know, you got to know what is most important and valuable to you because ultimately it is your life. If you are doing the things that your friends or your family or other people find valuable and enjoyable and you're just doing them because you're going along with the flow of whatever's happening, you're not going to live a life that's very satisfying to you. And you know, you're always going to have this dissatisfaction inside and you're not going to feel good about yourself because you're doing things that aren't your own values, the things that you want to be doing, whatever that happens to be. For many students, for many people, it could be a job, career, education that they're doing for someone else and not because they actually want to do that. And the trouble with that is that it does take time. It can take 5, 10, 15, 20 years to figure out what you really want to be doing with your life. But that's what this video is about. It's about encouraging you to get onto that journey of exploring who you are, exploring what your interests are so that you can figure out what it is you like doing and start doing that. So it is your life and no one can live it for you. And if you don't live a life aligned to your values, you will get results you did not want. For many people, this can lead to depression, nihilism, and all sorts of negative toxic emotions, you know, resentment, bitterness, which in my estimation and in the estimation of many people I respect and admire are things you want to avoid. You know, you don't want to be 30, 40, 50 years old and you're just bitter, you're resentful, you hate your life. And anytime someone tells you good news, you get jealous and angry and you take it out on other people. That's not the life you want to live. Secondly, moving on, once we have organized in our minds the things we do for joy and the things we do for responsibility and function, it's imperative that we bring some balance into these activities. So when I get home from work, honestly, like I love just laying in my bed, 
eating some food, watching some YouTube videos, which is essentially what I was doing right before I started recording. But keeping in mind, especially now that I'm posting more on my YouTube channel and I have people who actually watch my videos and talk to me about them in person, it's reminding myself that my life is more than just relax, like relaxing and de-stressing after work. Now that the basketball season just ended, it's time for me to start focusing again on making my material better and getting back into my reading habit. And once my nose heals, getting back into jujitsu and physical exercise. But it's imperative that we bring balance into these activities. And that's what this dream was really trying to tell me. That there was these things in my life that were out of place and they were preventing me from moving and functioning in the way that I wanted to. So just like our favorite shirt, sometimes we let the things we enjoy most become overused in our lives. In turn, we tend to ignore and store away, like an ugly shirt, our responsibilities and duties. So this might look like avoiding homework, avoiding chores, avoiding you know going to work, just preferring to lay around at home, scrolling on your phone, whatever it is. It might also look like not doing the things we love within reason, right? So for me, one of these things that I love doing is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and something I would something I would and have in the past done, you know, five to seven times a week, which nowadays is very hard. You know, I have this responsibility of being a teacher. My time is divided amongst the things I have to do at work, the things I do after work that I volunteer for, meeting my parents, friendships, relationships, all that kind of stuff. So for me, sometimes I can lean into the things I like too much and I start neglecting all of the other things that I'm supposed to do, maybe taking care of my health, making sure I'm sleeping enough, visiting my parents. So in making jujitsu an over-focus of my life, it detracts from my effectiveness as a teacher and it overemphasizes certain priorities in my life. I mean, you know, obviously it's really good to be physically fit, to be in great shape and to know how to fight. I mean, these are good things. But there's a certain point where hey, I'm avoiding my problems, I'm avoiding my challenges in life and the things I have responsibility for by just going to jiu-jitsu and saying, hey, you know, I just want to exercise, meet some friends, hang out and get a good sweat in. And what happens is, you know, just like a shirt that we really love or a pair of pants we really love, we tend to overdo the things we enjoy and we neglect everything else. And when we start neglecting things, that's when our life starts falling apart. That's when things start getting worse for us. And so this dream for me was really an analysis and reflection of how do I bring balance back into my life? You know, there are several areas of life that I want to be focusing on. And if I just over focus and spend, you know, 10, 12 hours a week doing jujitsu, which takes a lot of time getting there, getting home, showering, all the energy that it takes to train and then coming home exhausted, having to prep for sleep, all that kind of stuff. It just takes away from everything else. And so bringing balance back into the equation is very important. So in closing, you know, in your life, it's important to have this congruence between your values, beliefs, and actions. So either we act out our beliefs or more likely we reverse engineer our beliefs through our actions. So you take a reflection and you say, maybe you tell people, oh, I love reading. And then you reflect about how you spend your time and maybe your screen screen time per day is about six, eight, ten hours a day. Well, do you really love reading? Maybe if most of that time is spent reading a book on your phone, but if it's just several hours spent just scrolling on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you got to reverse engineer your beliefs. Well, you'd much prefer just scrolling through your apps. You're not really reading. So either we act out our beliefs and we say, hey, I love reading and you spend 15, 20, 30 minutes a day, whatever it is that you set up with yourself, time reading, exercising, stretching, eating well, preparing meals, talking to your parents, whatever it is, or we reverse engineer. We take, an, we take a, an account of all the things we do in our life and we say, oh, these are clearly my beliefs because that's what I do. And with that with that method, it's important to understand that you can always change who you are and you can always change your, 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 the way you act in the world, right? And, and reshift those beliefs and those values and actions. Additionally, we must be vigilant when it comes to ensuring that all of these important pieces of our lives have their place. You don't want to overemphasize one because you're ignoring another one or because you just don't want to deal with something. You know, it's better to face that problem head on and bring that balance back into your life because that's what's going to allow you to experience the most, you know, level amount of mood, whether it's up and down, 
you know, you want to have consistency in your life. And on that note, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe.